Welcome to MBM News. I'm Erica Nord. And I'm Emily Beckman. And I'm Mackenzie Miller. Today we are reviewing the trial of Sacco and Vanzetti. Nicola Sacco and Bartholomew Vanzetti, a shoemaker and a fish peddler, were the most famous victims of the Navidus ad Jude. Both men were Italian immigrants and anarchists. Both had evaded the draft during World War I. In May 1920, Sacco and Vanzetti were arrested and charged with the robbery and murder of a factory payment in his guard in South Braintree, Massachusetts. Witnesses had said the criminals appeared to be Italians. The accused asserted their innocence and provided alibis. The evidence against them was circumstantial, and the residing judge made prejudicial remarks. Nevertheless, the jury still found them guilty and sentenced them to death. Sacco was born in Italy in 1891 to a successful olive oil dealer. Some people say he had no formal education or dropped out of school at age 9. At the trial, he said he spent seven years in school and dropped out when he was 14. Sacco emigrated to the United States in 1908 when he was 16 with his older brother named Sabino. They settled in Milford, Massachusetts. Sacco met and married Rosa Zambelli in 1912. Their first child was a boy, who they named Dante. He was born in 1913. And their daughter, Ainz, was born two months after Sacco's 1920 In 1912, birth. Sacco helped the defense of Arturo Giovanniti, an Italian immigrant who had been arrested on a dubious murder charge. It was one of his first red clubs. Sacco began attending weekly meetings with strong anarchist groups in 1930. He began to subscribe to Subversive Chronicle, an anarchist newspaper published by Luigi Galliani. Sacco became a devotee of Galliani and spent the next several years writing for the paper, donating and soliciting funds for anarchist activities, as well as caring for his family. In 1917, Sacco met Vanzetti before they, along with several other anarchists, moved to Mexico to avoid the draft of World War I. While living in Cagnito, south of the border, the anarchists took pseudonyms. Ferdinando Sacco became Nicola Massimoitelli. While he later resumed his, using his old surname and was occasionally called Ferdinando, he was forever not to be known as Nicola Sacco. Vanzetti was born in Villa Folletto, Italy in 1888. Vanzetti set out for the United States in 1908. Vanzetti left New York in 1909 to work in the court side, eventually making his way to Springfield, Massachusetts, and working in a brick factory. After reading books on political philosophy, he moved toward anarchism. He soon found his first anarchist comrades and began receiving the Subversive Chronicle, the same anarchist newspaper that Sacco read in. Vanzetti moved to Plymouth, Massachusetts in 1913, where he lived with Vincenzo Brini and became a virtual member of the Brini clan. He stayed in Plymouth until 1917, when he and some of his fellow anarchists left for Mexico to escape the draft. Strangely, while in Mexico, he supported the group by once again practicing the trade he hated, baking, and grew his now famous long, droopy mustache. Vanzetti left Mexico in September of 1917 and moved to Plymouth, Massachusetts. He took up fish peddling and continued his anarchist activities. He continued living this way until his 1920 arrest. Seven eyewitnesses placed Sacco in or around Braintree. Ballistics expert Proctor testified that bullet three was consistent with being fired through Sacco's pistol. Expert Van Amberg noted a scratch on bullet three, likely made by a defect in the rifling of Sacco's pistol. At the time of their arrest, Sacco and Vanzetti had just gone to the house of the owner of a car repair shop where a man connected with a stolen Buick that were was presumed to be the car used in the murder had been taken and overland to be repaired. Under a prearranged plan, the wife of the repair shop owner called police. Sacco and Vanzetti suddenly left. The prosecution suggested that they left because they were suspicious of Mrs. Johnson's actions and feared being connected to the brain. Oh, placed Vanzetti near the crime scene. The gun found on Vanzetti at the time of his arrest resembled one that the paymaster guard Berardelli was thought to be carrying at the time he was shot. At the time of his arrest, Benzetti said he bought a gun at the store, and he lied about how much he paid for the gun and where the bullets came from. Some additional notes on the Sacco and Benzetti case. By any reckoning, the case against Benzetti was weaker than the case against Sacco. Even the prosecution may have had some doubts about Benzetti's guilt. The assistant prosecutor wept when the jury pronounced Benzetti guilty. In 1943, Carlo Tresca... The best connected anarchist leader of the time said Sacco was guilty, but Vanzetti was not. In November in 1982, Francis Russell was informed in a letter from the son of Giovanni Gambari, one of the four members of a group formed in 1920 to arrange the Sacco-Vanzetti defense. 
that Sato was guilty and Vanzetti innocent as far as the actual participation in the case. Thank you so much for watching NBM News. We got it! 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 We got it!